Hey guys, this is Leah with Scott Leroy Marketing. In today's tip video, I'm going to show you the brand new updates made to the commissions section of your opportunity in KW Command. So there were just a bunch of updates ran by KWRI, so it got a little bit of a facelift, and it looks like it made it easier to navigate um, and submit your commission request right away. So I'll be showing you how to do that. All right, if you're wondering what a commission request is and when to submit that, all right, typically you'll be submitting a commission request when you go under contract, okay? And what a commission request is, is how you let your office know how you're getting paid on this deal. Are you receiving the full commission? Are you splitting this commission with an outside referral or with another agent within your office? Okay, so that will let your office know so when they cut your commission check, they can make those adjustments. All right, so the first thing you would need to do is, of course, have the opportunity created. All right, so I'm in KW Command at agent.kw.com. And you're going to want to navigate to your opportunity right away. And the two ways that you can get to your opportunities is either from the opportunities section on the left side menu to view your pipelines, or you can go to the contact record. That's where I am. I'm in my contacts and command. I always find it easiest to find my opportunities from the actual contact record because then on the top right, you'll see opportunities and that will list any opportunities associated with this contact. Now, feel free to pause this video while you go in and, and locate your opportunity. It's totally fine. And once you find that, let's go ahead and click on the name of the opportunity to open that up. Okay, so whether that's from within your contact record in the opportunities section or if you found that from the pipeline in your opportunities dashboard, either way, go ahead and click on the opportunity name to open up the detail section right away. Now, where we're focusing on in today's tip video is the commissions tab, right? But I just wanna bring your attention here that the documents tab on the top white toolbar is where we would go to start a transaction to create either a loop and dot loop or a room and DocuSign. Okay, so anytime you go to create a transaction in command, you will wanna follow these steps where you create a contact, add the opportunity, and then start the transaction in DocuSign or dot loop from here specifically. Okay. Now outside of that, so that is done in the document section, again is how you'll get into your DocuSign room or loop and dot loop. But for this tip video, you'll notice that the commissions tab is grayed out. All right, so this will remain grayed out until you have an accepted offer in the offers section. So let's start there. So when you get a new offer, okay, whether it's a multiple offer situation or let's say you, you got an offer in and you are accepting it, you'll want to come in and click add new offer right here on the top right. And it will prompt you to go ahead and name this. So I'll leave that as initial offer. All right, but if you wanted to, let's say, also add in the uh, last name of the buyer, let's say we'll do clean. And click create offer. It'll then prompt me to take me through these four steps here to add in some details about the offer. The great part about this is that any information that you put in for the offer details will autofill onto the commission request. All right, so we can go ahead and update the offer date, close date as needed, and then click the parties option. So on the bottom, we're always clicking kind of the next option, right, that arrow. But of course, if you're following along with me, guys, and actually doing this for a real commission request, feel free to pause the video as you go along. All right, that's how I learn best as well. So here we have the buyer, we're listing in the parties. So we have the buyer and the seller. All right, my contacts, my client's information is auto-filling on the seller side because this is my listing in this example. So I'll go ahead and put in the buyer info. All right, and we really just have to fill in the fields that have the red asterisk next to it. Those are the required fields, but you can go ahead and fill in the other details if you'd like to. And you'll need to put in also the buyer's agent name and then click the terms. Right? We're just click, clicking basically next on the bottom with the arrow. 
And you can see we're coming as we scroll up, we're coming right across this uh, little pipeline here. So now we're here for the terms. So let's go ahead and make this a pretty one. We'll say, sure. Okay, we'll do $100,000 in cash. And then we'll say that they're financing 300,000 for a total sales price of 400K. All right, so then now we come on down, we can put our uh, percentage for earnest money. So again, you just have to fill in any uh, starred fields. So you just have to go ahead and put in the sales price, but I'll go ahead and put in, let's say that earnest money, percentage will say 31%, 1%. Again, you can see it calculates it for you, which is great. You can add an option fee if there's a termination option here, All right? And these different things will be comparable if there is a multiple offer situation. So sellers are going to contribute, let's say, three grand to closing costs. And then I'll click the agent analysis. And this is just really for my notes here. So I could put in pros, let's say, cat 100K of cash, pretty good. And then cons, let's say it's contingent. All right, just some examples here. And click save. All right. So from here, I see a bunch of the data on this offer. And this is a really great tool, especially in a multiple offer situation. You would be able to add in the new offer so you can easily compare and contrast uh, the different details of the offers. Now, once you are have accepted the offer, now your clients have signed. On the right hand side, you do have the option to accept that. Now notice, as soon as I click the accept option, you will then have access to the commissions tab on the white toolbar. So if I click accept, it will reload my page and let me know that the offer has been updated and I now have access to the commissions tab. And this is where things really get exciting. All right, so I'm on the commissions tab here. And again, so this is where we are submitting to our market center when our uh, transaction goes under contract. We are telling our office how we're getting paid. Okay. So right here, all this information is pulling over from the offer. If there are any issues, it will let you know, or if you need to alter anything, you can come up here and click in the edit general information. All right, like it's kicking back. I guess I didn't put in the contract date. So I'll go ahead and add that in and click Save Changes. All right, you'll see that has that updated there. All right, just a note, if you need to make changes to this close date here, you'll have to go back to the offer section and change the response all right, to no longer accepted um, so that you can then change the close date and then you will need to re-accept the offer, okay? And if you have questions on that, feel free to let us know, support at scottleroymarketing.com. Right? But that is necessary if it won't let you change the close date and you need to do so, that's why. You'll have to change your response on the offer first and then resubmit. All right, so moving on down here in this payment section. So you'll see your information off default, so you should see your name always at the top here. And you'll see your units, and this is really important that you know that the units always need to add up to one in a transaction. Right, I see my gross commission here, how much I'll be receiving. And you'll notice above your name, you have the option to add another agent. Now what this is for is for adding an agent on the same side of the transaction specifically with you. So if you are splitting the commission with another agent in your office, whether you're on a team with that agent or just working together on the transaction, okay, you can add them right here to let your office know that you're splitting that commission amount. So if I click add another agent, I can go ahead and search for the agent's name here. Again, this agent needs to be in my market center, right? Because this agent will be on the same side of the transaction as I am. So in this case, we're co-listing the property together. And the agent units here, so this total need to, needs to total one unit between you and any agents that you're adding, okay? So if this agent is getting 50% of the commission, you would put in a 0.5 for this agent, and then we'll go back and edit our unit amount to 0.5 as well. 
If this agent is receiving 30% of the deal, I would give this agent a 0.3 and update my unit amount to 0.7. Okay, so again, that unit number always needs to total to 1.0 as that is one transaction, okay, one deal. So right here, I can go ahead and click calculate the commission for that to update. And as I scroll down here, I can go ahead and start updating the different information here. So let's say I can put in if this agent is, you know, a donating to KW Cares, I can go ahead and update that information there. There's also an option to add items, to add in referrals, bonuses, deductions, and concessions, and we'll cover that when we're editing your side of it, okay? In this case, this is for an agent that we're just adding in to split the commission amount with, so I'll go ahead and click Save Changes. So now if I scroll down, I'll see that other agent. And I see that agent unit is 0.3. All right, guys, and if you're still working on doing that, feel free to pause the video so you can always follow along. Okay, of course, I don't expect you to go this fast in a real life transaction. All right, but once you notice that this agent unit is the 0.3, and I see that agent has been added, I'm going to scroll up to my information. And I'll notice a bunch of different errors right here. And that's mostly referring to the fact that it's very mad that our unit numbers do not equal up. Okay, so anytime you see unit numbers, I'm sorry, error messages, excuse me, on the right-hand side, the main things that you'll want to check is that the unit numbers add up and also that the gross commission amount adds up. All right, and I'll, I'll go over that in just a moment here. But we have this agent unit, so we need to come up and click Edit Agent Payments and change your unit number now to 0.7 right, because we gave the other agent a 0.3 of the unit, so we need to give ourselves a 0.7 and then click to calculate it. I'll update my commission amount. I can see my royalty and my company split here. All right, you cannot change anything from your end here. This pulls automatically based on what the KW system has. If you notice anything that looks incorrect, I would just recommend uh, sending a message to your MCA to have them keep an eye out for that when they actually do the closing check. You can donate to KW Cares if you would like to right from here and so forth. The other KW Kids can and Bold Scholarship. And you can even click Add Item on the very bottom if you need to add in an outside referral, bonus, deduction, or concession. So I could click Add Item here. And I would see this drop down here. And this does scroll, by the way. So if you need to get to outside referral, you would want to keep scrolling down. And it'll prompt you whichever item you pick, you'll uh, get prompted with different fields that you'll need to enter in. And if you have any questions about any of these fields, I would just go ahead and check with your market center administrator who handles cutting your commission check just to double check what information goes in each field if you're unsure. All right, so again, you can add all of those items right from there on the bottom where it says add item. You'll see that overview, and if you have questions on that, of course, let us know and then we'll click Save Changes. Okay, so now it's much happier, right? A lot less error messages on the right here because our, our unit totals. So if you are getting you um, errors, make sure to look out for the units totaling. So if you add, you know, even a third or in fourth agent that are, submitted, uh, are splitting this commission amount, that's fine, just make sure that all three agents would in total equal up to one unit. So right here I have 0.7 units to myself and 0.3 to the other agent, so that equals one. And I also see that this number, my gross commission, plus the other agent's gross commission does equal the total commission at the top. Okay, that's where a lot of errors come in. So now I'm left with just one more error here and that's telling me that's missing the information uh, for the listing. If it is your listing specifically, you will need to click Select from Listings at the very top under the um, opportunity name. So I'll click Select from Listings. Typically on the, on the top right, it will default on only your listings at first, so you should be able to easily go ahead and select your listing from there. If you're not seeing your listings display under only my listings, 
Try going ahead and clicking on this drop down on the top right to change it to all listings. Right? Sometimes uh, it just doesn't categorize your listing. So you can check here. You can come to all listings and instead search by street number or MLS number. The MLS number is typically easier to search by. So once I go ahead and search, I can then scroll down and click select to the right of whichever property. Okay, and I see that property address at the top now. And that is something that you'll want to do very early on when you create your listing opportunity, um, as it will autofill the listing details on to your forms and DocuSign if you link that in command, which is pretty cool. All right, and this is only a necessary step if it is your listing. Right, it won't have this option if it's your buyer. All right, so now I have all these cleared up, all these error messages, so I can leave any notes right here to my MCA or compliance coordinator and go ahead and submit that whenever you're ready. All right, and again, typically you'll want to do this when you go under contract. All right, guys, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to email support at scottlamorymarketing.com. And I would highly suggest checking out the opportunities and DocuSign classes as well on slmtraining.com to complement your knowledge on what you learned in this tip video. All right, guys, have a great one.